All right, kiddo. So here we are again. Um, this is going to be just a real quick uh, explanation of how we use pedigrees in science. Remember, as we've been talking about genetics, um, a lot of times what we're really interested in is seeing how a trait moves through a family. So as you can see right here, we have a really big diagram um, that actually shows a family. It kind of looks like a family tree, and that's basically what pedigrees are. Um, but we're looking at uh, how traits move through a family. Um, so just a few things here that you need to know before we really dive into this. Uh, first of all, each row represents a different generation. So like this first row up here, um, this is going to represent, you know, the original two people in this family. So let's say, you know, um, you know, the uh, great, great grandma and grandpa or whatever. So then the next line is going to be their children. So whenever you have a horizontal line, that's what we call a marriage line. So this line going between these two people says that they're married. A vertical line coming down, and then here it splits off into two, that is called a uh, descendant line. So that means that any of the people who come off of this line coming down are the descendants of these two people. So, you know, they get married, they have kids, and then here are the kids down here. Again, here their kids get married, there's a marriage line, and then descendants, they had one, two, three kids. Uh, this kid over here got married. He had one, two kids. You know, these got married, so on and so forth. So you could follow it all the way down. Uh, let me just erase some of this real quick. There we go. So uh, a few other things. So each one of these lines is a generation. Notice that there is a Roman numeral for each generation. That's really important when we start referring to people because I don't want to just say, oh, you know, that square over there. Um, I want to have a specific way of referring to it. So when we look at each generation, um, we're going to give the Roman numeral. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. And then you number the people from left to right. So this would be individual one. This would be individual two. So like if I wanted to refer to this person right here, okay, that person would be individual Roman numeral one dash one. That's the only person that applies to. Um, let's skip down here. So let's look at the third generation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Big generation here. So if I wanted to refer to this person right here that I circled, they would be third generation. So Roman numeral three dash four. So the fourth person in that generation. Uh, another thing. Generally, as we're looking at a pedigree, as we go from left all the way to right, we're going from old to younger. So if I asked you, you know, who's the youngest person in this pedigree, it'd be this person right down here, because they're in the last generation all the way to the right. Okay. Other things. Um, notice that some are circles and some are squares. That is indicative of the sex of the person there. Remember I said sex, not gender. Gender is a social construct from psychology, where sex is a biological term. So here, this square, that is a male. So that's the universal symbol for male there. That is a male. The circle then is a female. Now, there's kind of a silly way to remember this, and I didn't come up with it. It was told to me by a really old professor when I was in college, but he said, the way that you remember that the circles are females is because circles are curvies and females are curvy, and the squares are males because males are squares. You know, he's such a square. So that's the way that you can remember those. Um, the other thing that's really important to notice about this pedigree, and I'm just going to erase here again so we can kind of start fresh, doo -doo 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 -doo, is... Um, you'll notice some of the boxes are shaded and some of the boxes are not. On a pedigree, when a box is shaded in like that, that means that person has the recessive phenotype. Notice I said phenotype there. So if we were going to look at something like ears, remember we use big E for free earlobes. And little e for attached. Again, I apologize for my writing. It's hard to write with a mouse. Um, because this person has the recessive phenotype, that means they have attached ears. Okay, a person who is not shaded in, they have the dominant phenotype. 
for dominant. I'm just going to abbreviate pheno. Okay. So we could go through, you know, this person, individual 1-1, one one, is is a dom, or is dominant phenotype. Individual 1-2 would be recessive. So this person would have three earlobes. And this person would have attached. Okay. All right, so let's go to just a whole new pedigree here. Um, well, it's just a clean one. And let's look at how we how we use this then. So on your homework that you have to do, you have to go through a pedigree and label the genotypes, remember genotypes of each person. Well, the pedigree tells you their phenotype. And again, we're going to use the letters big E for free and little e for attached. Maybe I should have stayed on the other one. There we go. So this person, not shaded, they have free earlobes. So what we know is that they have to have at least one big E because they have the dominant phenotype. Okay, now if we just look at this person, we don't know what the other letter is. It could be a big E, it could be a little E. So we, we need to look around in our pedigree for more information. Um, this guy, which he's male because this is square, so he would be little e, little e. And the way you know that is they have the recessive phenotype. So that means that to have the recessive phenotype, you need two recessive alleles, so little e, little e. So what you should do, the very first thing you should do when you have a pedigree is go through, and all the people who are shaded in, go ahead and give them two recessive alleles, because those are super easy. And actually, the recessive alleles tell you more about people in a pedigree than the people who have the dominant trait. And you'll see why in just a second. So we're going to go through here, label all these guys, Lily, Lily. And again, as you're working with your homework, I think the homework is still using uh, E's for earlobes because it's just an easy one to see. Um, there we go. So all those are labeled Lily, Lily. So the second thing you should, that's the first thing you should do. The second thing you should do is give everybody who's not shaded in one dominant allele, because we know that in order to have the dominant phenotype, they have to have at least one of the capital letters. So I'm just going to go through and we're going to give everybody a big E. Okay, because then we can go through the process of trying to figure out, well, what are their other letters? And I'm not going to finish all of them, but I'll eventually show you what the finished one looks like. Okay, so now we have to figure out what the second letter is. So I've got some of these guys done over here. We'll work with them. Now I'll finish up the right half. Okay, so in order to know what the second letter is, we have to look at their offspring. So, you know, we're going to go down the offspring line. And here we have one that's got free earlobes. Well, that doesn't really tell us much about dad because we know he already got his big E from dad, or sorry, from mom because dad is little e, little e. So let's go to the other child, the daughter. She's little e, little e. That's great because that tells us that, yes, she got one of her little e's from mom, but the other little e had to come from dad because remember, you get one allele for each trait from each parent. So in order for her to be little e, little e, she had to get a little e from mom and a little e from dad. So that means that mom has to be big e, little e. Okay, let's go on here. This person, we know that they're big E literally, and here's why. They got their big E from mom, but all dad has to give is a little E. So we can fill that one out. Okay, so now let's look at their kids. Well, this is kind of problematic because we know that both dad and mom of these two kids have a big E. We don't know who this big E came from. The other thing that we don't know is we don't know what mom's second allele is, because she could be either big E, big E, or she could be big E, little E. Oh, crud, that's a problem. There's not enough information to tell. Now, if we if we had, you know, more of her family pedigree, we could maybe figure it out. But here as it is, with them only having two kids, 
both of whom have the dominant trait, there's not enough information. Whenever there's not enough information to tell, you have to do like what I did right here. You have to list both. If you don't do that, I'm going to take off points. Because if you were to just put big E, big E, you're telling me, I know this person has big E, big E, but you don't. So you have to say what the possible combinations are. So again, here, not enough information. Because the mom could be this, and so they could be big E, big E, but we don't know. So um, there's not enough information. So these guys as well have to be big E, big E, or big E, little e. Same thing here. Big E, big E, or big E, little e. Okay. So let's look down here. This one. This is great because these two produce two kids for both recessive. That means that this person has two little e's. One came from mom. Guess where the other one came from? Dad. So we know that this dad is big E little e. Okay, if we just had his phenotype, he could be big E big E or big E little e. But because he has two recessive phenotype children, we know his second allele is a little e. That's great. That's why I was, I was saying when we have recessive phenotypes, that actually tells us a lot. So then if we look at their offspring, um, this one obviously got the big E from dad, so he had to get a little E from mom. If we look over here, same thing. This person has a big E because they're dominant, but all their kids have the recessive phenotypes. So that means they must have that little E. Uh, over here, again, they produced some kids that were literally little E, so that means that dad has to be big E little E. Here's the other thing. This tells us more about these two. Big E had to come from dad. All mom has to give is little e's. So these are going to be big E, little e, big E, little e. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here for just a second, and I want you to see if you can fill out everything over here. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and pause the video and fill that out, and then when you, once you've got it, press play again, and you'll see my answers up there. All right, I'm going to give you cheaters one last chance. Hopefully you filled it out. I'll show you the answers in just a second. So remember, as you're working through there, you have to look at the parents and the offspring to try and figure things out. All right, here's the answers. So looking over here, again, this one, obvious. These have big E or two little E's, both of them. So all their kids are going to get two little E's. Uh, if we look here, you know, this is one that was in question because this person married into the family. But if you look, they produced a couple kids that were little E, little E. So we know they have to have a second little E. For these two, they got their big E from mom, but all dad has to give is little E, so they're big E, little E. Over here, mom's little E, little E. Um, and because this son is little E, little E, we know that dad over here had to have had a little E. And then over here, we know that this one's big E, little E, because the big E came from dad, little E's came from mom. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, a review on pedigrees if you're still a little bit fuzzy about that. And remember, um, you did the pedigree studies packet in class with a partner um, over the weekend um, or, you know, the next day, depending on what semester you're watching this video. Um, your homework next is to do the, uh, the pedigree homework worksheet. So that should be on Angel. Um, so go ahead and find that.